Welcome to Cynthia Untamed. My name is Cynthia Nyongesa. This is your youthful and educational channel where we have conversations with and about children and youth in Africa. We also inspire the current generation of leaders across the continent to dream big and hope deeply. Today, we will learn about the Constitution of Kenya focusing on the right to education for children with disabilities. Article 53 of the Constitution of Kenya guarantees every child's right to free and compulsory basic education. Further, it says the fact that the child's best interest shall be maintained under all circumstances. Kenya's Basic Education Act of 2013 was passed to implement this requirement and protect all children with or without disabilities. On the one hand, the Act protects the right to education for children with disabilities in the following ways. Section 28 provides for the right of all children to free and compulsory education. Section 34 ensures that no child will be denied admission to a school on any grounds, including disability. Section 44 also establishes public special schools, which are to be maintained by the government to ensure all children who need them can go to school. On the other hand, the Act discriminates children with disabilities by establishing public special schools under Part 6, Section 44 of the Act. However, this is indirect discrimination because public schools are prohibited from denying them admission based on their disability. The Act fails in upholding Article 24 of the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, which provides for education for persons with disabilities in two ways. It continues to segregate children with disabilities by establishing special schools. It fails to mention the right to inclusive education and reasonable accommodation, which has been determined to be the best way to achieve quality education for children with disabilities. Article 2 of the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities defines reasonable accommodation as the necessary and appropriate modification on a case-by-case -case basis to ensure an individual with a disability enjoys the same rights as others. It may be interesting to note that some people may view the Act as benefiting children with disabilities in Kenya since many of these children were never allowed to attend public schools. What are your thoughts and experiences on this? The Act creates special schools for children with disabilities without justification. Although some children may need assistance or accommodation, that is not true for all children with disabilities. There is no justification for treating children without disabilities differently from children with disabilities who require no accommodation. Yet, even for those children with disabilities who may need assistance or accommodation, there is no reason to require that they attend separate schools or receive separate curricula. Following the election of Vice President Kamala Harris as the first African American and first Asian American Vice President of the USA, you may have seen this famous image of her walking side by side the shadow of six-year-old Ruby Bridges. The little girl was the first to integrate an elementary school in New Orleans following Brown versus the Board of Education's landmark case that ruled 
that establishing separate schools for black and white learners was discrimination. Putting children of separate races in different schools was held to be a violation of fundamental human rights. Therefore, to ensure that the act does not indirectly discriminate children, it should take the following approach through amendment. Schools should first ensure that the use of supplemental aid and services could be achieved satisfactorily. The next step is to examine whether the school has mainstreamed the child to the maximum extent appropriate, specifically whether the school has made efforts to include the child in programs with non-disabled children wherever possible. They must look at unique benefits the child will receive in regular classrooms, such as the development of social skills, resulting from interaction with non-disabled peers. If the inclusion leads to disruption in the classroom, then separation may be justified. Further, if the inclusion will demand the teacher's attention to other children's disadvantage, separation may also be justified. Doing this should be done progressively, meaning it may not be done at once but it will require continuous effort and time to ensure no discrimination against any child in Kenya. Therefore, Kenya will be on the way to achieving Sustainable Development Goal 4 to ensure inclusive and equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunities for all.